So we now have what I believe is the first poll out of Kentucky since their June primary between Charles Booker and Amy McGrath. And um, it's looking pretty good for Mitch McConnell, not for Amy McGrath. Shocker. So as Alexander Bolton of The Hill reports, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is leading his Democratic opponent, Amy McGrath, by a commanding 17 points in a new poll that shows the GOP leader ahead 53% to 36%. 84% of Republicans polled by Morning Consult said they support McConnell, while 79% of Democrats said they back McGrath. 12% of Democrats said they also support McConnell. That's actually shocking. The GOP leader has also more support among independents than McGrath, with 45% backing McConnell and 33% favoring McGrath. The survey of 700 likely voters in Kentucky, reported on by the Louisville Courier Journal, was conducted online from July 24th to August 2nd and had a margin of error of 3.5%. The poll shows McConnell in a much stronger position than a Democratic one published last month by Garen Hart Yang Research Group, showing McConnell ahead of McGrath by only four points, 45% to 41%. A civics poll from June showed McConnell leading McGrath 53% to 33%. McGrath has been a fundraising magnet, bringing in $16.9 million in 2019 and $30.2 million so far this year in a bid to deny McConnell from winning a seventh Senate term. McConnell, by comparison, has raised $37.7 million for his re-election since winning his last race against Democrat Allison Lundgren Grimes in 2014. Now, I think that those last couple of paragraphs there really tell you why the Democratic Party establishment sided with Amy McGrath early on. It's not just because they're ideologically aligned with her. It's because she can raise a lot of money because, I mean, she has no principles. She has no shame. She's not afraid to beg millionaires and billionaires for money. She'll do that. And as a result, if she can fundraise a lot, that also helps other Democrats, because Democrats oftentimes fundraise for each other. So they want someone who's going to bring in a lot of cash, which is why they supported her over anyone else. Now, this race, theoretically speaking, it shouldn't be that difficult. Like, in theory, Mitch McConnell should be beatable, because up until, I think, 2020, he was the least popular senator in the United States of America. It wasn't until 2020 when Susan Collins actually surpassed him as the least popular senator in America. But I mean, this should be a doable thing. It's not going to be easy because this is a deeply red state and Mitch McConnell is incredibly effective, but it still shouldn't be seemingly impossible. But here we are with a 17 point deficit to make up for Democrats. Now, I'm rooting for Amy McGrath, but um, I was really out of it that we have to get Charles Booker because Charles Booker, there's no question about it. He would have had a better shot. Now, I'm not going to sit here and smugly say, oh, well, Charles Booker definitely would have won because I don't know that. None of us know that, right? And I think that even if he were the nominee, it would be really difficult. I think that the, the you know, the deck would be stacked against him. However, having said that, looking at data from Kentucky, you can't deny that if we were trying to be the strongest in the strongest possible position with the strongest possible candidate to take on Mitch McConnell, it wasn't Amy McGrath. It was Charles Booker. Let's go back to that civics poll that was cited. So this was conducted between June 13th and June 15th, and they surveyed 898 registered voters in Kentucky. So in hypothetical matchups, as they noted, Amy McGrath was losing to Mitch McConnell by 20 points. And look, Charles Booker was also losing to Mitch McConnell, although he was losing by 14 points. Amy McGrath was losing by 20 points. So it'd still be difficult for Charles Booker to beat McConnell, but that's less of a deficit to make up. We'd still be better off than the position that we're in now. Now, when it comes to favorability, Mitch McConnell had a net favorability rating of minus 5, whereas Amy McGrath had a net favorability rating of minus 35. So she was less favorable than Mitch McConnell. Now, Charles Booker, on the other hand, had a net favorability rating of plus four. So he was viewed overall more favorably than Mitch McConnell and Amy McGrath. Although there is a caveat here. 38% of people were unsure with Charles Booker, meaning that they probably didn't really know about him. So if they knew more about him, then perhaps that number could have changed. But what we do know is that of the people that knew Charles Booker, according to that poll, they liked him. He had a positive favorability rating. He was the only person out of those three politicians who was in the positive and not in the negative. 
And on top of that, there was a lot of grassroots support for Charles Booker that just isn't there with Amy McGrath. Like he activated a base of Democratic Party voters that weren't previously activated. He had a different strategy, a strategy different than the person from 2014, Alison Lundergan Grimes, who lost to Mitch McConnell. So if running as a centrist Republican light candidate didn't work in 2014, why is Amy McGrath thinking that it's going to work in 2020? Like, it doesn't make sense. Now, apparently, Amy McGrath, according to early polls out of Kentucky, polled better against, against Mitch McConnell and even beat him by a point um, when she really emphasized term limits in the Senate. So if she pushes for term limits, then that can be her saving grace because in Kentucky, that's something that really resonates with them. So my advice to her is to actually shift to the left, replicate Charles Booker's strategy because whatever he was doing was working, he was more favorable, and scream the loudest you possibly can about term limits. You have to throw out all the stops because even if you simply convince enough voters that you're better than Mitch McConnell, which Amy McGrath is better than Mitch McConnell, you still have to have a really big win. Like you can't just eek by because there's going to be voter suppression. This is a deep red state and Mitch McConnell has a lot of institutional power and support to where people in Kentucky can stack the deck in his favor. So you can't just win, you have to win comfortably. And I just don't think that Amy McGrath is up to the task. Now look, I mean this earnestly. I wish her luck. I hope she beats Mitch McConnell. Again, he's got to be defeated. He's one of the most destructive politicians ever. So he's got to go. But I can't help but feel frustrated that, you know, we had someone who was more, I don't know, someone who was better positioned to beat Mitch McConnell. And Democrats just fucking, they threw all of that away. This opportunity that was unique that presented itself. They said, no, we're going to go with the uh, uninspiring Democrat who's a centrist because she could raise money. That tells us that they don't necessarily care about winning. They care about fundraising more than anything. It's just, it's so frustrating because they should know, like any Democrat in power, Chuck Schumer especially, should know the immense amount of power and influence that Mitch McConnell has. And if he wants to be the Senate Majority Leader, which would be awful as well. But if he wants to oust Mitch McConnell and have Democrats take back the Senate, then, I mean, you should want the stronger candidate to win in theory. But, like, Democrats convince themselves um, that it's the, you know, more milk toast option, the Republican light candidate who is going to be best suited to take on the Republican. It's just, look, it's not going to work. I'd be surprised if she won, but I would also be happy if she won. But it's it's just we have a bigger ditch to dig ourselves out from since we went with Amy McGrath. So um, we'll see what happens. But certainly, if she doesn't turn things around, she's not going to be able to make up that deficit. And Mitch McConnell will be reelected for another six years, which would be a disaster, especially if he remains the Senate Majority Leader. So uh, I hope they take this race seriously, but something tells me Democrats are going to fuck this up.